Cameron, thanks for helping us review Dirty Work. Originally, it was supposed to be Tony, but I uh, sent him somewhere special. Oh, hey, James. Justin told me to meet you guys here. This is apparently a Jurassic Park 3 Speed 2 convention. James? Welcome to the Museum of Famous Eyeball Injuries. Oh, come on! Is that me on the end there? Note to self. Don't trust Justin Silverman. And go to ad. Hey, Karen, I like your shades. Hey, Tony, I like your shades too. Oh, what's that? You don't have Shade Tree shades? <laughs> well, you're missing out. Shade Tree is an eco-friendly brand that makes wooden sunglasses. And the lenses are polarized. They come in a microfiber soft case. Inside a bamboo hard case. No two styles are the same. The fusion wave is made of zebra wood. And the firecracker is layered in stained maple. The firecracker is also a part of the Shade Tree America collection, and a portion of its sales goes to disabled US vets and their families. Look at the adjective, sunglasses. Check the link in the description and see how you can get $5 off your purchase today. James, have you seen Dirty Work? Uh, I have now. <laughs> uh, I never heard of it before. It's Bob uh, Saget's first acting uh, role ever. He directed this film, Bob Saget. It was the first film he ever directed. His wait, first wait. acting role? Wait, wait. The first directing, directing role. role. Sorry. Yeah. He directed uh, yeah. okay. uh, mm -hmm. Dirty Work. Um, yeah, I think so in like 96, and then it finally mm. came out in 98. Mm. I think they like pushed it off because it. We were looking it up too, and it's it's actually last build is Chris Farley's last film. Yeah, it's Chris Farley's last film, and the reason it got pushed really? so far back is two reasons. One, uh, Norm Macdonald was really critical of O.J. Simpson, so one of O.J. Simpson's friend at NBC decided to like be as awful to the movie as possible behind the scenes. And two, it was supposed to be rated R, and the studio cut it down to um, PG-13, which cut, like, half the jokes in the film. And then they released it, like, the same week or around I the can, same time as Godzilla. I can so, definitely see this being rated R, like, for sure. It got stomped flat by Zilla. Yeah, right? <laughs> It cost uh, thirteen million, I think, and it only made ten. So it was a we big review bomb. a lot of movies where uh, dinosaur movies hurt the opening weekends. Up, <laughs> you know, yeah. like uh, there was Last Action Hero. Uh, what else was like? Jurassic Park came out the same weekend as something else too. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, uh, well, problem. a week before Jurassic Park was a Super Mario Brothers movie. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah, that's what. It, uh, yeah, this movie stars Norm Macdonald and Artie Lang, who I find as fantastic comedians. Yeah. And Especially they, in the 90s, like, that was definitely the, the top for them. Mm -hmm. they, they play uh, Mitch and Sam, who have been childhood friends, and they go on their uh, adventures to make a revenge for higher business because they're losers at everything else. Yeah, which Norm Macdonald plays such an amazing loser. Bannister has a 90-degree easement, and it dies into the inside face of the new Ah, 90-degree easement. See, that's, uh, that's going to be a problem. What's the problem? Well, we lied on a resume. We know nothing about construction. When is lunch? Uh, I love Norm Macdonald. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. Like, his delivery of everything, his jokes are hilarious. I really like, he's just super dry. Yeah. He's definitely my favorite uh, Weekend Update. Um, yeah, he also said that his roast of uh, Bob Saget. Was, yeah, yeah. I well, that's the thing. I didn't know which one you know was happening first, but his roast, uh, his his um, segment in the roast of Bob Saget is the best part <laughs> of the entire roast because every joke he makes, like the the audience is just like what, like they don't know what to make of any of his jokes because they're all just not even jokes they're not funny they don't land at all yeah, that, and yeah. and that's the whole point is like what's so funny about it is nothing lands to the point where it's funny that nothing's landing i will say dirty work um was definitely one of my favorites growing up or in the early you know i'd be in college and rendering stuff and doing whatever like when i was in like film school or whatever and i'd watch this thing all the time because there's so many just like funny skits put together mm -hmm. it's kind of reminiscent of um don't be a menace of south central or like freddie got fingered where it's all these like really funny scenes put together as loosely as possible. Yeah. Did anything stand out to you in this film, James? 
Um, there's, there's a couple individual moments. Like, there was, a, very early in the movie, there's these two dogs humping. <laughs> and the thing is, the only thing that could go, th that went through my mind was, who is holding the dog to make it yeah, do the humping? Yeah, someone has to. So, I'm just uh, picturing, like, some crewman, or... <laughs> I'm just picturing, like, some poor crew member like back there just holding this dog and just trying to make the dog like <laughs> and the dog is just like just looks like it just doesn't care one way or another yeah, I remember Bob Saget's there like this is how you do it we gotta frame up the shot <laughs> yeah right Bob Saget wanted to make like a super raunchy film because this is like this is mm -hmm. right after he got out of um, mm -hmm. America's Funniest Home Videos. Yeah, yeah and he wanted yeah. to become like this shock comedian, and he yeah. also had Norm Macdonald and Artie Lang, who later went on the Stern Show. So like the idea was be as shocking and like I think wrong to be honest, possible. I, I yeah. think Bob Saget went from he went from being Mr. TV Dad. It was this this eighties nineties dad sitcom dad that was mm -hmm. super just yeah. I, I'm such a nice guy. Uh, and then he was on... Well, his stand-up comedy uh, is very raunchy. Yeah, that that's, too. That's primarily what he does. But, but then it, I mean, he, America's you know. Funniest Home Videos with him making the awful voice. Yeah, like, do yeah. you remember? Yeah, yeah. When he'd be like, oh, look at me, I'm a yeah, little yeah, kid. Yeah, ah. voice. <laughs> yeah, he has a really good book, which is mentioned in another video, too. is A Dirty Daddy, yeah. where he talks about balancing the, those two careers, being like the family-friendly dad and then being the raunchy comedian. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, because you guys reviewed that, I think, in uh, Dumb and Dumber... Um, the Dumb and yeah. Dumber review you guys did. Um, you guys talk a lot about Bob Saget and like the mm -hmm. scene where he comes in and is like, oh, there's shit everywhere, you know. Yeah. Um, we also I, talk a lot about Dumb and Dumber in that one. Yeah, a we lot. do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess the, yeah. I guess we should talk about some of the plot of this film. So they start out as kids. They do all this revenge kind of stuff. Fast forward to the future. They're both losers. Um, I believe Artie <clears throat> Lang's character Sam lives with his dad, who is an ex-professional boxer. Mm -hmm. um, Mitch is working at a, a pizza place that is like girlfriend's Aldo's. Yeah, Aldo's. He gets fired because he didn't get to the place within thirty minutes. <sighs> Which that scene was making me laugh so hard when he goes back. The guy says, "If you want the money for this pizza, you tell Aldo and the rest of those sweaty Italian to come down here and get it for me themselves." Oh, and also, uh, he started saying all these nasty things about that Mussolini character. The Italian guys to fight. <laughs> to go and dude. beat this guy up. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, he called us. Yeah. And he said you didn't get there in time. And it's like, oh, it's, it's uh, I don't know how to even like approach it because as I watch it, man, I'm like, I'm laughing well, like pretty is, damn hard at a lot, a lot of, of it. A lot of shitty stuff happens, but then like it's lifted by Chris Farley. And yeah, oh cast. my God. He, I mean, he was my favorite thing about the movie because, you know, I mean, it always happens when, especially whenever an actor dies, especially when they die prematurely, yeah. mm -hmm. then you really start to appreciate their you know, their, their, their roles a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. So and when you look back and you see Chris Farley in any movie, you get a little sad, but you also kind of like, like, oh man, he really, he really was funny. He was you know? incredibly he was, funny. Yeah. And, and, and when it comes to like SNL, I think my two favorites in the entire world are him and Will Ferrell. Mm. I think they're the funniest cast members of SNL to ever grace. I mean, like also I, I'm not counting like Bill Murray and things like yeah. that, but mm -hmm. man, Chris Farley was so goddamn I, funny. I believe, it's ridiculous. So he died in 97 and yeah. this came out a year later because of all the pushback. And then I don't think he's credited for the film in the credits. I'm not no, sure No, he's why. uncredited on, on <laughs> IMDb. It says he's uncredited. What's funny is his brother's in the film. And yeah. His brother uh, plays the, um, he's in the, movie the, the movie theater guy who tells him, I, I pay you 20 bucks if you blah, yeah. blah. And he was also in the boy band Together. Oh, I love Together. Which, yeah. <laughs> I know, like Calculus. Yeah, he was in that. Yeah. And uh, I think his name is Kevin Farley. Kevin Farley. They go to the bar. Yeah. Where Chris Farley is. Yeah. And Chris Farley has his <laughs> nose bit off. Norm McDonald's character, Mitch, meets a girl you see her later she's part of the whole movie uh sam Artie lang gets in a fight with some frat guys uh and chris farley does the most infamous scene of the film where he goes to play some music for the for for the the, the bar fight that's to get the about to break out and he goes and he's 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 at the jukebox you playing something good hell yeah rolling stone street fighting man g Stephon. you just hit g8 if you like but that seems great because you you have Chris Farley. I guess he didn't tell the bartender actor that he was gonna scream in his face because his eyes get so wide yeah. when Chris Farley screams at him. It's pretty funny. Every uh, scene that Chris Farley's actually in in this movie is is like my favorite scene of the movie. They get they get revenge on the um, what do you call them the the frat guys yeah by pretending to be like 
cops, mm-hmm. and they like they they call them up and they go, "Hey, uh, some some guys are dressed up as cops, and they are going around robbing the frat houses. If they come over, beat them up." Real co- real cops are called by them. Hello, real cops. Yes, I'd like to register a complaint. All right, fellas, we got a little complaint about the noise. Whatever you say, officer. Which leads um, the two guys to show up in cop uniforms and they and beat, beat them up. And beat them up, yeah. So that's kind of the revenge stuff that happens. In also, uh, there, uh, Artie Lang, his dad finds out he, he has a heart attack and he needs to get a heart transplant. Yeah, that, that happens right um, after this. Yeah. He has a heart attack and they need $50,000. Yeah, because Chevy Chase has, uh, Chevy Chase as the doctor has gambling debts. Really nobody to blame for this but myself. Well, I don't know, maybe the Buffalo Bills, the Boston Red Sox, or Mr. T, or or the Jets. Wait a minute, Mr. T, are you telling me that you bet on the fight in Rocky Three and that you bet against Rocky? Hindsight is twenty twenty, my friend. <laughs> How do you feel about Chevy Chase in this movie, James? Oh, I mean, it, what I, I, the same way I feel about seeing a lot of the actors is that you know I had not seen this or heard of it ever before but when I see it and I see all these familiar faces it's like it brings you back to a certain time period you know even Adam Sandler makes a cameo appearance yeah in, uh, and when you see stuff like that and you see Chris Farley and Norm Macdonald you just know you're able to place the movie you're able to know wh- what time period it is oh that sounds like super 90s like, oh yeah it's, 90s. It, okay so it's got like Green Day it's yeah. got uh, they, they, Chumbawamba. I Chumbawamba. Get, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chumbawamba. It's only missing um, the spin doctors. So. Yeah, yeah. I needed uh, some smash mouth. Or yeah. Something. Oh, Third Eye um, Blind was in it as well. Yeah. So I was like seeing all those actors and it gives me, you know, it, it gives you a nostalgic feeling for sure. Mm-hmm. Even though the rest of the movie, I'm just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. It, Actually, I, I made a list of... Because I couldn't remember all the time. I had all the actors that are in this film. So you had Norm MacDonald, Artie Lang, Adam Sandler mm-hmm. as Satan, mm-hmm. um, where he's... <laughs> where... Before, was that before <laughs> Little Nicky? I th- yeah, think it was. It's way, yeah, yeah, it's a lot before. Because um, this is before, like, Waterboy. And, yeah. and, and, if not, it was shot in 96, so it was, like, mm-hmm. definitely... Yeah. Uh, Don Rickles, mm-hmm. who I love. Uh, Chris Farley, as we said, is his last movie. Uh, Rebecca Romaine is in it, mm-hmm. yeah. as the bearded woman. The bearded woman. Shooter McGavin, I forgot his real name. Yeah, who is always plays the best yeah. bad guy in these movies. You got like Chevy Chase, Gary Coleman, of course, mm-hmm. uh, David Cockner, I forgot, the, he plays Packer in The Office, John Goodman, for mm-hmm. no reason, and Taylor Howard's in it, who's um, the one lady from Monk, which is pretty good. So oh. it has a, like a ridiculous... It, it has yeah. one hell of a cast. Yeah. No, it definitely, Even though a lot of these are really short appearances, yeah. still, yeah. it's like, you know... That's probably Bob Saget going, mm-hmm. hey, I, you know, hey, yeah. buddy, you want to be in my movie well, real yeah. quick it or feels, whatever? It feels like an SNL movie that's not an SNL Well, movie. I remember when we were watching this at first, I said, is this... At, did Adam Sandler... Is this like an Adam Sandler movie? It feels like mm-hmm. it, yeah. it. feels totally right. like, uh, like any of those movies, like... Um, we should do best and worst Adam Sandler movies. Oh, mm-hmm. best... Oh, you want to do it now? No, no, not, not, not right now, but uh, I, I, I think I know what my best so, is. Right. So the father, uh, the grant, or whatever. What is it? What is it? Okay. Well, it's a tie. There's two. There's uh, there's there's Happy Gilmore and The Wedding Singer. I okay. love The Wedding yeah. Singer. Okay. I might say Punch Drunk Love, but that's kind of like a... I, I love oh, that one. Yeah, I, I love that's that one. Same I don't feel like that's a real Adam Sandler movie. No. Okay. Yeah. The dad, uh, had, the boxer dad has a heart attack. Mm. They need to get the money for Chevy Chase so the bookies do not kill him. <laughs> um, so they decide to get just regular jobs and they suck at it or they're faking their credentials. Yeah. And they eventually work at a movie theater. And I love this because when I saw this movie for the first time, I was working at a movie theater. I talk about how I worked at a theater a lot from a concessionist to a projectionist. Don Rickles is their manager, and he's a total oh, Don Rickles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, total dick to him. Roastmaster mm-hmm. Don Rickles, <laughs> and um, he's an asshole to him. So they decide to. He looks exactly the same. Yeah, he <laughs> says that one line too, where he's like, "Why don't you get on a horse and go live in the middle of nowhere?" Yeah. yeah. So uh, they make him. Uh, all the other employees are like, "Listen, you if you." Uh, teach his, give this guy his medicine, get him fired or whatever, we'll give you like 20 bucks, blah, blah, blah. So they're like, okay. So uh, it's the big opening night of a movie and the corporate management's there, so they're going to try and get the ma- the regular manager fired. And they play a movie that's uh, men in black who like to have sex with each other. Look, an alien. Yeah, we better have sex with each other. 
which is a lovely film. Which is funny because in the trailer yeah. of the film, it doesn't say Men in Black or like Death Sector. It says Harry Peter and the Sorcerer's Bone. Yeah. Like it's a Harry Potter joke. No job is too dirty. Put away! Your wand is magical, Harry. But they clearly cut that trailer it's, it's, after Harry Potter came out. Yeah, and it's in really the, superimposed badly in the trailer. It's in the DVD that we were watching. Yeah, I don't know. And huh. and it's not even like... It, like, we were sitting there like, didn't this movie come out like several years before even the first book might have come out? Yeah, hmm. I don't know. It was really weird. So uh, that makes everyone in the theater run away. And then Don Rickles gets fired. And then um, Mitch and Sam realize they can make a revenge for higher business. They, which some for some reason they make a storefront. Yeah. That they buy from Kirkpatrick. I love too. Kirkpatrick is just like, if you don't pay rent, I'll punch you in the stomach, yeah. and that's his whole. The polish the movie. The bad guy bails them out of jail. Mm -hmm. They work for him. They take down the apartment complex where the one girl's um, mother lives. Even Kathy, though Kathy yeah. has a nice business. They shut down the house in like a funny scene that plays <laughs> ACDC uh, Dunder Cheap, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is fantastic. They uh, tear up the place. Um, they get it shut down. Shooter McGavin decides, I'm not going to pay him, and blah, blah, blah. So they eventually get together with the people from the house, and they do a scene at an opera a house. super revenge, yeah, Where they on do a him. super revenge on him, including Chris Farley with a bunch of CG skunks that look yeah. awful. <laughs> um, uh, I want to yeah. talk about the workout tape that's on the TV. Oh, oh. That's the same th workout tape from Friday the 13th Part 4. So, yeah, I, when I saw that tape in, in Dirty Work, I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Because all, all the years I've been talking about Friday the 13th, whenever Part 4 comes up and, you know, I mention that workout tape, it's like, what the hell is that? It's like, that's the only movie you ever see that in. And it's also in another movie, apparently. It's that's in Dirty weird. Work. I did not so notice that. I never knew it was in two movies. It could be in more. Yeah. Who knows? Like, now I wonder how many movies have that tape in it. But the workout tape, it, it is a real tape from the <laughs> 80s. I forget the title. It's something... Oh, something I thought it was that, just something they made for uh, Friday no, the 13th. No, it's actually real. Yeah, yeah. these movies. Because in the 80s, there were so many workout tapes that people started coming up with, like, different, like, alternate workouts. Yeah. So it was always about, like, so this weird. is a type of workout you could do this way you or that know, way. And some guy probably you know, was like, you know, the only people who are buying these are, like, dudes. I'm just going to do this. And, like, they produce that for a certain reason. Buns of steel. There's no way that that's yeah. made, like, for, like, a person to actually work out to. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, they did like weird stuff, yeah. like workout tapes, like yeah, like it, like that would be a whole like genre right there. If you were to, like just dig up all these old workout tapes, <laughs> and a lot of them only on VHS, yeah. they'll, they'll never put. I have the the Ty Bo tapes. Oh, we should Ty all do that sometime. Oh, like, we that, should all do workout. It tapes. was like okay, so it was like Taekwondo. Yeah, mixed Billy with, Blanks. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mixed, <laughs> You know what? That used that used some royalty free music in the background. That's the same music I used for the Mr. Riggs stuff. Where it's like in the, it's that like that that like stock uh, like metal like yeah, yeah. like oh man, yeah. that's it funny. I don't think it was the same track, but it was on that same uh, CD from the Fresh Music Library. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember hearing that as a kid. Um, I remember too. They used to when they used to have those uh, tapes were like eight minute abs or yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> In the 90s, like, yeah. you buy this I, tape. I mean, you know, it must suck to be Bob Saget if you're watching this, where we, instead of talking about Dirty Work, we talk about workout tapes. Yeah, I uh, know. I, I guess the last thing, I guess, is definitely watch, definitely get Dirty Work. It's on Blu-ray. I think it might, you might be able to pay it to stream somewhere. But what, I don't know what's up with the telecine or what they did when they scanned the film mm -hmm. for the Blu-ray, but the movie is completely oversaturated. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was, like something weird with like the, the color settings of my monitor or mm. blah 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 um, but the file i downloaded and the um uh the blu-ray it's like everyone's shirts are like it's bright yellow like they need to tone it down i don't know what happened with yeah the there scan, was the one guy with there was like bright red and he was like it, it was like not broadcast safe red it was like <laughs> burning the yeah uh, the screen well dirty work is not broadcast safe in general yeah that's mm -hmm. true 
Yeah, I so mean, I mean, I have a different perspective from these two guys because I think you both saw it a long time ago. Right? I've never. Yeah. I watched it the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Like, All right. I, I watched it like in okay. 1999. So Kieran and I both saw it for the first time recently. Yeah. Okay. So even seeing it for the first time, you could have different perspectives because I just watched it and was just like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah. So it probably. I feel like it would have helped me if I saw it earlier, but this isn't something that I. Like, it didn't connect with me. I mean, other than having, like, all the familiar actors and mm -hmm. being, you know, nostalgic. But, like, the movie itself, I was just like... Uh, it's like, 90s. I, I guess I'm nostalgic uh, for it, which is that's weird. Just, that could be... Yeah, I mean, honestly, with me, when I watched it, I was, like, brought back to movies like Waterboy and, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Billy Madison. Yeah. And and uh, you know the, the a lot of like '90s uh, you know mid to early '90s like uh, mm -hmm. comedy movies that are just so over the top that like mm -hmm. you know di didn't care about like just wanted to make a joke didn't care mm -hmm. about yeah, any yeah. sort of context or the future or how mm -hmm. people would think about like something yeah, it was yeah. just to make a joke every single thing is to make a joke and that's kind of what like is funny about it is this movie everything in it is so fucking ridiculous mm -hmm. every single character chris farley has his nose bitten off mm -hmm. uh the you know uh mitch and and uh i mean there's and, even and i scene... like ridiculous movies like i love mm -hmm. the hot shots and naked gun movies and all that but like this one it was just kind of like it, you know, it depends on your mood too. Like I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of times I'm really sleepy when I'm, I'm like watching these right before like falling asleep and stuff. So sometimes it just doesn't really connect. And I didn't hate it either. It wasn't like, oh, this is like god awful. It was just like, you know, it, it was. It got a few laughs out of me, but it wasn't like, you know, it, it didn't. It didn't register in my head as like cult classic. It was just kind of like, okay, I see why this movie didn't make it big. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I could see that too. I mean, mm. I, I I don't know. Like this movie, I could understand. This is a movie that I think Roger Ebert and Siskel mm. would have seen in the nineties and said, "This is terrible." Yeah, 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 oh yeah. my god! It, it, uh, the critic score, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, is seventeen percent. <laughs> um, audience wow. is at like sixty five, which I guess isn't bad. For That's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, no, I no. always kind of go by like um, if you, the critics have to kind of take into consideration like what is yeah. a classic comedy, what is kind of a schlock. I, I give it a perfect hundred. Um, I, I wish that we got the R rated version, which we'll never see. Mm. Um, uh, maybe that would have fixed it because you know kind of what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I thought it was pretty damn funny. It made me chuckle a bunch of times and. Well. Chris Farley is always like, you know, rest in peace, Chris Farley. Mm -hmm. I miss you. Any final um, thoughts, James? Chris Farley. Yeah. Chris Farley. G7.